first out at Pompano, and we're going to find out right now. They're off and facing on the inside, going for the lead quickly. That is over the wall, right alongside goalie Jeff Leaves. And now they're joined by Arbitrator from the outside. Three of them across the track into the first turn. How about it comes away fourth. And right there, racing in fifth. That is kick up the storm. And as they race around the first turn, goalie Jeff and over the wall, battle it out. Arbitrator is right there, followed by How About It and Tyler's Best. There by the opening panel, 28 seconds flat. Now they come by the stands the first time. On the outside, goalie Jeff takes a short lead. On the inside, over the wall now yields and gives way. Right there, third on the outside. Arbitrator now puts the pressure on. Fourth on the rim, Tyler's Best is going up. On the inside, it's How About It. On the move, kick up a storm, followed by a hostile takeover. Kentucky Spur is locked in at the rail eighth. And Arbitrator right there, that is Armbro Harrier. They race over to the half on top. Goalie Jeff, he's cleared. Coming after him, Arbitrator the outside. Over the wall is at the rail, the half fifth. The seven and one fifth. Now they are on to the back stretch. And Goalie Jeff still in the chance as a good snug hold on him. Arbitrator second. Over the wall is at the rail. Tyler's best on the outside. Fourth, how about it? Fifth. In six, kick up the storm on the outside. No, going up. It's hostile takeover. Kentucky Spurs shuffled back. Armbro Harrier the rail. Three quarters in one twenty-five flat. That third quarter, twenty-seven and four. And as they race around the final turn, it is all goalie Jeff turning in an awesome performance here. It is definitely a horse of the year, three-year-old pacer of the year performance, and he's coming to the wire all by himself, chewing up ground with every stride. Everybody's far back. Goalie Jeff under the wire on an off track in one fifty-four and one. Well, Bruce, I don't know what else you can say about that. Uh, goalie Jeff certainly put any doubters to rest and a huge effort there, just walking away from the rest of the field. An easy, easy winner. I think the best word to describe goalie Jeff is awesome. Winning the Breeders' Crown, winning the Little Brown Jug, winning the Prix de Tay, winning the Adios, winning the Oliver Wendell Holmes, winning the Dancer, winning the Bluegrass, winning the Tattersalls, and definitely winning three-year-old pacing Colt honors tonight. Goalie Jeff went off at 1-9 to nine and came home the easiest kind of winner. Bruce Beck and Stan Bergstein back at Pompano where Goalie Jeff has romped. The center ice stable, nine people with disparate occupations, one in the poultry business, one a boxing promoter, one a funeral director, Bernie Mann who owns the New Jersey Nets basketball team, a real estate broker, a businessman. The nine of them put up $400,000 last April to buy this colt, and one of the partners also is the trainer, Tom Ortandi, who came from Budapest, Hungary when he was 13 and trained last year's and this year's Little Brown Jug winner. Goalie Jeff and B.J. Scoot last year. Let's go to John Pavlock in the middle of that wild winter circle. Michelle shots. I don't know where the bottom of this colt is, but he is fabulous. Uh, coming by uh, the early leader there, uh, John's colt right at the uh, quarter mile mark and drawing up. In a moment, we're going to look at the isolated replay and take you all the way around through this fabulous mile on a sloppy track in 54 and 1. All right, Mike, here we are at the start. Tell us a little bit about your early strategy. Well, I just took my time to get to the front uh, and because I want to cut the, uh, to cut the mile and I saw that the uh, an outside horse left and uh, so that's why I took my time to get to the lead because I want to I was going to I want to stay in front there. I didn't want to let nobody go. Not to take anything away from over the wall, but uh, he was no danger to keep you parked. Well, not really and uh, the, uh, the horse that I was concerned about was uh, Kentucky Spur and uh, I saw that he, he was back going to the half and uh, half and 57 in the piece so that's why like in the back stretch I opened up a little. I just didn't want to give him a chance to get close to me though. It could change the race. So. And from here on out, what was your strategy as far as trying to uh, rate the quarters? Well, just uh, trying to rate like uh, slow fraction to the half and uh, like I said, I was worried about Kentucky Spur and I just didn't want to let him uh, come close to me in the back stretch. But that was it. Now here's a challenge from the outside. Yes, but that was the, that was the horse that was parked right, right from the beginning there, and he was no threat to me. Mickey McNichol. Okay, we're going to approach the half, 57 and one. It means the second quarter of 29 and one. Already a little bit of a breather. Yeah, for a horse like Goldie Jeff, uh, quarter 29 and one, he was just walking for him. Pocket change, and from here on out, it's not going to change. Uh, Really, I thought his best race of 1989 was maybe his elimination of the Little Brown Jug. Impressive for a different reason. He had to come from far back late. 
But here uh, he's out on his own. He does not appear to be one of those Colts that gives up when he's on the lead. Now, for all the, the as many starters he's got this year, the Colt is just in uh, unbelievable shape at this time of the year. Uh, you know, I have to give him uh, th all, a lot of credit to Tom Artandy to uh, keep that Colt going all year like that. And he raced a uh, seven-time double lead, and the Colt is still going better than ever. So, you know. Now down to the three-quarter mile mark, 125 headed home. The crowd was really behind you, Mike. Yeah, and that was that was easy in the stretch. It was, it was just like cruising in the stretch. Undoubtedly, three-year-old Colt Pacer of the Year. Congratulations. Congratulations, Mike Lachance. Thank you very much. All right, with me also is Al Ward, a representative of the Center Ice Stable. Up in Ontario, Al, please, please, on behalf of all the racing fans in North America, tell me goalie Jeff will be back at four. We don't know. Oh, please, please, make a decision. Well, I'd like to see him back at four, but you never know what's going to happen. The, uh, he's uh, just an awesome animal. Tom Artandy's uh, kept him in condition just marvelously. You bought him for $400,000, a bargain. Well, it seems at this time, but back when we bought him here at Pompano last March, it, uh, we didn't know whether it was a bargain at that time, but it's uh, with Michelle and especially Tom Artandy. He's just an amazing trainer to uh, give a horse that's conditioned this horse, kept him as strong as he has throughout the whole year. And as you said before, Michelle, that race that he did at the elimination at the Little Brown Jug, after that, everybody has the respect for this this horse that he deserves. Al Ward speaking on behalf of Center Ice Stable. Here are the prices on this run. No uh, doubt about it right here. Our congratulations. Goalie Jeff, trainer Tom Artanti, Al Ward, and Michelle Achan. It's back to you, Bruce. Well, this one's not going to make anybody rich. Goalie Jeff returning to 22-10 to 10. Price is okay. Kentucky Spur came up. A monstrous effort to finish second. He was well shuffled back. 2-10 and 2-10. Hostile takeover. 2-10. Time of the mile. 154 and 1 on a track that has been hit by rain much of the evening. And Phil Sanfilippo, director of sales, promotions, and publicity, certified vacations, making the presentation to the center ice stable, the breeder, Charles Michael, the trainer, Tom Artan who gives credit to Mark Lowe, the fine young trainer who broke this one and handled him as a two-year-old. Goalie Jeff winning the Breeders' Crown in impressive and outstanding fashion.